Right, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at how we can create a random number in the material editor. Uh, it's not going to be purely random, or completely, computers aren't great at actual random, um, but it's going to be random enough for our purposes. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. So here I've just got a blank material uh, applied to this sphere, and we're going to be using the object position node. I've covered this before in previous videos, but just to recap, uh, what this node does is it takes this location uh, and then that's it, it gives you that value. So in this case it's 0, 40, 50. If I plug that into emissive colour and just apply, this object in the preview is at 0, 0, 0. So three lots of zeros, that's obviously black. Um, but you can see here this object has some nice green and blue emissive values uh, and nothing in red. If we set that back to zero, there it is in black. Um, and then as you move along the green axis, it gets brighter, same red and blue. Obviously Unreal can't display negative numbers so anytime it's in negative space it's just going to render purely as black. Um, if we want to show that, if we take the absolute of those values, that's just going to ignore those negative signs and so now it's going to be back to being nice and glowy. Obviously it's still going to be zeroed at zero but now either way in the green axis it's going to give you some some value. So, so that's what it's giving us. Well um, I'm just going to create a few of these, so I've got a bit of a uh, variation, and I'm just going to mask out only the green axis for now, and just work with that. So if I mask out, in this case I've moved my objects along Y, I'm going to mask out the green axis because that's where these objects have different values, and if I plug that into emissive, we'll get some on this side. Ooh, let's do this. You can see here we're getting brighter and brighter values, um, and then our zero point and then negative values aren't giving us anything visible at the moment. So we've got a, a kind of continuous number stream, haven't we here? Um, these numbers are getting very big. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, but what we want to do is convert our continuous number stream. I mean, this is fine; it's all near the origin, but you might be working, I don't know, in thousands. Uh, so we want to take our continuous numbers and make them into a repeating pattern. And there's two ways we can do this. One is to use a sine wave. If we plug that in. Uh, oh, And actually what we've got here is all completely black. Now this is a bit of a, a coincidence basically. Uh, if we have a look at all these positions, because I've got grid snap on, all of our positions are actually whole numbers, aren't they? Well, sign of any whole number is going to give us zero. So if I turn grid snap off and just make one of these, see as you move that, obviously it's moving through things that aren't whole numbers and we're getting some colour there. So we actually need to have some control. Um, and as I said before, these object position values are getting huge. Uh, this object position over here, 790. So all we're going to do is divide our big numbers by another one. I'm going to parameter and I'm going to call this randomness scale. Not going to divide by zero. And what this is going to let us do, a stop us using whole numbers everywhere, which was just giving us a result of black everything for everything. Um, but it's also going to let us control how that sine wave looks. Now, if I just go in here, make this row of spheres even longer. We put in a really large value. Hopefully, you can see kind of the colours of that sine wave coming through, so it's negative values and then positive, and you can see that's fading in from grey to white, then back down to grey. So you're actually seeing the uh, the sine wave value um, there. What I might do actually, if I take that sine value, uh, if I multiply it by, let's do it this way, 001, which is the up in world space, and then I also multiply that by uh, sine height. Plug that into the world position. I should, if I've done this correctly, be able to preview that sine wave. That works quite well. Um, so you can see, as we're getting a sine wave, as we're changing that randomness scale, we're bringing things in closer 
to each other. Um, the alternative to a sine wave would be a frac. This is going to do, rather than an up and down sine wave, it's going to go 0 to 1 and then it's going to repeat again. So it ignores the whole number part and just gives you the fractional element. So if I plug that in, and again that should give you our 0 to 1. Now with these quite high values of d dividing, so we're getting sort of 2,500 in our random scale, you can very obviously see that pattern, can't you? It's not, it's not particularly random. But if we go in here, and we go smaller and smaller and smaller, until the amount of sort of fracking that's happening is all kind of like between the pixels, or between the objects. Now, there's still a little bit of kind of pattern to this maybe, but, but you can't really tell if I move this along. We can go even further, push this even further. Um, you don't want to go too far the other way. Here we are. As this moves along, it's it's repeating pretty quick. So when you're placing your objects around, it's quite obvious, or well, it's not very obvious, where the next one would go. And there's nothing stopping us combining, let's say, a sine and a frac together, depending on the amount of randomness or the randomization you need. If I do that, now I've combined my sine wave and my frac. That to me, let's see that out, looks like a pretty random stream of colours. Um, if you preview the height, you can see. Yeah. Now obviously at the moment, this is only random in that axis. If I make a few of these this way, because we've only taken the Y position to create randomization. So in actual fact, anything that's got the same X or Z position, which is all of these spheres now, Just lag it a little bit. It's not very random in that direction. Well, nothing stopping us taking our our in initial object input. Let's say maybe I mask out the red channel here. Still want to divide by our scale value, and I'll do the frac in red and a sign in green. Add them together, and again I should get hopefully randomness or what looks like randomness. It's all mathematically predictable. Maybe not enough variation. Maybe it needs to have. Yeah, that down. Make that a bit easier to see. Maybe get rid of those. Oh, yeah, got rid of this guy. Anyway, um, hopefully that looks like a kind of random pattern. Obviously, there are values of randomness that won't make it look random. And this is a quite a uniform grid layout. I mean, obviously, we've just duplicated these around. If you've naturally placed your objects around the scene, you're not going to have such a specific grid pattern. Um, but these random values, now that you've got them, you can use them for anything. So tinting your material, um, adding kind of like dirt patterns, things like that. Um, one thing to note, it won't work on any animated object. If this is moving through the world. Obviously you can see that flicking happening. Um, so anything that has this kind of material on, uh, but then in animation, it's probably not going to work because you're going to see it moving as it animates. But if it's static geometry, um, walls, floors, props, all that kind of uh, environmental things, having a little bit of variation based on the object position is uh, is really, really useful. Um, this also, as a note, won't work with foliage. When you paint foliage, if I go and find my plane, uh, let's just quickly hide all of those, create foliage, Sure. Uh, if I paint some of these, um, the object position for these spheres is all the same because it's all one object. So if I apply this material, not in there, not in there. How do I do this? This one. Material. Like we 
compile. There we are. Um, so that's now taken the object position. Well, the object position is for all the spheres is the same. So as I move this around, I get some. Oh, I get some fun, funness happening. Um, so there we are. So the flickering is based on the object position. Well, actually, the the sine wave stuff was working, wasn't it? If I do that, each one of these um, heights is being put through differently. So what's happening here? Well, the object position, this is all being done on the pixel shader. And the pixel shader is saying that each of these has the same object. But actually, this height thing is being done on the vertex shader. And that's giving us different values. So. I wasn't going to cover this, but I think if we just do this on the fly, there is a thing called the vertex interpolator. And what this does is it basically forces calculations to be done on the vertex shader first. So if I do that, oh, that's not the wrong way, it's the other way around, isn't it? I want to put those calculations on the emissive to be done in the vertex shader. And what that should do. is give us the correct result. So now this object position was working for the vertex shader for our offset, for our height. Um, and because we've now forced it to work on the vertex shader here and get converted to the pixel shader later, um, that's giving us our color as well. So that's quite a nice thing. There is also uh, per instance a per instance random. So alternatively to using the object position, um, we could just use per instance random or foliage and things like that that are painted or instant static meshes and that will give you the same thing um, and that will calculate a random value per object uh, so if I won't do that and then my heights and colors will be coincide so uh, I might do some more things on the vertex interpolator later um, just show that you can use the object position shader uh, if you're using the if you put it through into the vertex shader instead, uh, or for foliage, you can just use per instance random. Um, but this would allow, oh, that wasn't right, that's right. This would allow you to use the same shader for hand painted foliage, hand, or hand placed foliage, and also painted foliage, um, which is quite nice. Not sure in terms of costs, which is higher. 106, 180, 50. If I change that to this instead. 1.31738, so pretty comparable. So yeah, interesting. Um, different ways we can create random numbers in our materials. Obviously what you want to do with those, whether you want to randomize the texture, whether you randomize sort of like color changes, roughness, variations, anything you like, you can all do that in the shader. Um, but just a way of creating some random numbers, either using per instance random, if you're dealing with instances, such as foliage, um, or basing your random number off the object position um, and you can see that's not very random there's not much variation between those values anymore um, or if we go really really small you get to the point where you really can't tell the pattern that was coming in in the first place a lot of difference between those two values so therefore different different results hope that helps uh, quite interesting things I think um, yeah, as always, questions, comments, etc., let me know, um, and I'll see you all next time.